If you're ever wondering how peer-to-peer -peer connections work, then this video is going to explain exactly how those work. There's a couple core concepts and techniques used to create peer-to-peer -peer connections in this video. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of those using a tool called NetCab. For those of you who don't know what peer-to-peer -peer connections are, you can think of a peer-to-peer -peer connection as two computers connected together without either A, any ports forwarded or firewall changes, or B, a third-party server to make it happen. This is different from the traditional client-server model whereby a bunch of clients connect to a server and then the server does the translation of the information and it sends down messages or data to the other connected clients. One example would be like Discord or Slack or Gchat. If I were chatting with somebody, I would submit my message, the message would go up to some server, and then that server would push that message down to another client. This is not peer-to-peer -peer because I'm not directly connected to the person that I'm talking to, and the person I'm talking to is not directly connected to me. It's going through a third server. What makes peer-to-peer -peer connections hard is the fact that one IP doesn't always mean one computer. For server environments, this is less of a problem because one IP address does typically address one specific server. But take like a residential home, for instance. You know, maybe you have a bunch of phones on your network, you got a couple tablets, you got a couple Chromecasts, there's maybe three laptops, a desktop, an Xbox, a PS4, and all these have their own IP addresses. However, the IP addresses they have are LAN IP addresses. As far as the internet is concerned, every one of those devices in your home has the same public IP address. And the thing that makes all this possible is your router and something called network address translation. A network address translation has very specific behavior and we can leverage this behavior to create peer-to-peer -peer connections. I'm just going to briefly describe the environment to know what you're looking at so the demonstration makes sense. I've created two virtual machines in DigitalOcean called P2P1 in New York and P2P2 in California and those are these IP addresses. These are intended to represent client 1 and client 2 they are going to establish peer-to-peer -peer connections with each other. The left two terminals is going to be the virtual machine in New York, and the right two terminals is going to be the virtual machine in California. It's very important to understand that both these machines have firewalls with, which block 100% of inbound traffic other than SSH. So the question now becomes, how can we take advantage of network address translation to make this whole thing work? Let's take a simple example. Like you open your browser, you type in google.com, and you hit enter. What's actually happening is your computer is making a request to Google, but your router is first taking your LAN IP of the computer you're making the request for, and it's rewriting that to appear as if it's coming from your public IP, and that's what Google receives. However, what your router then does is it makes an entry of this, and it says, okay, I'm expecting a response from this particular IP on the same source port that was used for the request. And then when Google server sends that information back to your router, your router knows that it should forward that information back to your local computer. Without network address translation, there would be no way to know which of the 20 or 30 devices on your local network should actually get this information back. You can almost think of a NAT table entry as a temporary firewall rule for a very specific and limited period of time and for a specific IP address and port. So up until now we've been talking about TCP, and TCP requires a handshake and it requires actually something to be listening on the other end. And if nothing's listening on the other end, there's no need for a net entry because there's no connection that was made. And this is where UDP comes into play. And this brings us to important concept number one, UDP hole punching. And the way the UDP communications protocol works is you're essentially just firing off data to some IP address in port and you don't know if there's anything listening, you don't know if the data made it, and there's no expectation that you're even going to get a response from it. And the reason this is so key to making peer-to-peer -peer communications work is because as soon as we make a UDP request from one client, we immediately get a NAT entry for that router. And by sending this UDP request that creates this NAT entry, we call this UDP hole punching, which is to say that you're punching a hole in the firewall using this request. So the first step in this demonstration is on each machine, we're going to listen on a particular port for UDP connections. And we can do that with netcat. So we'll do nc for netcat, dash u for UDP, dash l for the port number, and then we'll specify some port should listen on. I'm going to choose 50,001. And it doesn't matter what you choose, you can use any port. However, higher is better just to avoid potential conflicts. And this is a very simple listener. If it receives data on that port, then it's going to output it to the console. Now, in addition for listening to data, NetCat can also be used to send data. So what I want to do now is I want to show you that if I try to send UDP data on that particular port to the other server, nothing actually happens. So what I can do is I can do echo. I can do something like hello, you know, for the message. Then I can pipe that into NetCat dash u for UDP, and then I will paste in the port for P2P2, 
and then I'll specify the port that it's listening on, which is 50001. And when I hit enter, you can see that nothing happens on the right side. What I'll do now is copy this command over to this other terminal. I'll replace this IP with 185.20. And then when I run it again, you can see that it still doesn't work. And if I go back over here and do it, doesn't work, doesn't work. So we're gonna create a new netcat command, but this one is going to be a little bit different and this is gonna actually perform the whole punch. So we'll start by doing echo and then we can put whatever we want in here. We have to send something. So we'll do something like punching a hole and then we will cat that to NC dash U again. This time we're gonna specify dash P, which is the actual source port that it should be using. And the source port we're gonna use is the one that this particular machine is listening on. We can then copy the IP into here and then we'll specify a new port, 5002. And then now I'll just simply hit enter, and it looks like nothing happened, but something did happen. It actually punched a hole in the firewall. So at this point, I'm ready to start sending data from P to P2 to P to P1. So the command I'm gonna use is pretty much the same as on P to P1, except I'm just reversing the ports, I'm changing the IP. So I'll send another message, we'll call it punched through. I will pipe that to nc-u, dash P, the source port is gonna be the destination port that I used on P2P1, so it'll be 5002. The IP is going to be the IP for P2P1, and then the destination port is going to be the one it's listening on, which is 5001. And if I hit enter, then nothing happens because the UDP hole already closed, so all I gotta do is run this again to refresh it, and then run this, and you can see that I get a message here, punch through. Now what's really cool about this is there's no existing connection. Like I don't have anything running. I can cancel both these listeners and then I can start them back up and I can come back up here and just immediately start sending data again. That probably got a little messy so I just cleared all the terminals out and we're just gonna start over. I have all the commands in history so we'll just go through it like that. So on client one, we're gonna start a listener. On client two, we're gonna start a listener. On client one, we're gonna punch a hole. On client two, we're gonna punch a hole. And then on client one, we're gonna send a message to client two, punch through. And then on client two, we're gonna send a message to client one, punch through. And this new connection I have available now is not limited to just sending a couple of words here and there. I could stream data to it. I could send files. I can do whatever I want. So if I want to modify this to send a file, say I have a file like hello.txt, it says hello world in it. Over here, what I can do instead is I can just redirect this to a file called hello.txt. I can re-punch my hole, and then instead of echoing punch through, I can just cat hello.txt. And now I come over here and I check the value of hello.txt, you can see that it now contains hello world. That's it for the concepts demonstration. The last thing I want to talk about is what would need to be true for two peers to connect to one another without needing to share all these IPs and ports with each other manually. To make this happen, you do need a third machine. And the whole point of that third machine is just to do the negotiation between two peers, then that third machine can just cease to exist. So basically what happened is two peers will connect to this one machine. That machine will take each other's IP addresses, exchange them with the two clients, and then send them which ports that they should both punch through and connect on. I intend to make a second part to this video where I'm actually gonna implement what I just described, except instead of using netcat, I'm gonna use Python, and I'll make a Python client and a Python server. And the whole intent there will be to reduce all of this complexity down to just a single script to where two machines can run that same script and they'll be connected to one another and then they can exchange chat messages. And I think that'll be a fun implementation of this peer-to-peer -peer style connection. Hopefully this was very informative to everyone. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional questions or feedback. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you on the next video.